Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, and today I have a pair of replays for you, both from the same person, one of my favourite World of Tanks live streamers, Mr. Crow, who, as the name would suggest, hails from Croatia, although I believe he still lives in Germany. At least, he certainly did a couple of years ago when I met him for the second time in Frankfurt. He is such a nice guy, and I'm entirely happy to once again be able to showcase some of his battles. When I say I'm entirely happy, I mean I am, um, because he's an amazing player. But the reason that I especially used to like to watch Mr. Crow was because he is the best light tank player I have ever seen. Or he was, right up until around about the point the armoured cars were introduced into World of Tanks, at which point he just kind of gave up. Um, which is entirely understandable, because what was the point? There's nothing a light tank can do that an EBR can't do better. So I was very sad to see Mr. Crow take a break from World of Tanks, or at least he took a break from World of Tanks live streaming. Sadly though, he doesn't play light tanks nearly as much as he did before things like the EBR 105 showed up, but he does very suspiciously seem to enjoy playing medium tanks that behave more like light tanks than, well, a lot of light tanks. Tanks like, for example, the French Barasque. The tier 8, technically medium, but well, let's face it, it's a light tank in all but name. It has a light tank chassis, it's got the EBR 105 turret, it's basically a light tank that doesn't get the camo bonus while moving that light tanks do. But it's in machines like this where you can use his light tank experience without actually having to be in a light tank. He's got a few more hit points than a light tank that this tier would have, which allows him to take the occasional hit that would otherwise have killed him. Now, this first battle here on the... I can't begin to pronounce the name of this map. Here on the Dave map. <laughs> Studzianki? I don't know. Um, I had to think long and hard about whether or not I was actually going to show it, because, uh, well, it is a fairly static battle. Uh, Mr. Crow doesn't really get to use the speed maneuverability of this uh, French premium medium tank to great effect, but I thought that I would actually include it in today's video, just so you can contrast it with the battle that followed and just to see if you can begin to imagine how frustrating this battle would have been for Mr. Crow. I mean, at several points throughout this battle, I regularly found myself thinking, how the hell did he have the patience and mental fortitude to not just rage quit? <laughs> and uh, if you stick around, I think you'll see what I mean. Now, even though he's not doing much in the way of active scouting because he's going to be pinned up against these buildings for most of the first or half or even two-thirds of this battle. He is scouting. He's within 50 meters, for example, of the Carnarvon over there. And initially, at least, while he doesn't get a lot of support, he does at least get some. But that support is very quickly going to dry up. Now, under most circumstances, if you're in a tank as terribly armoured as the Barask, facing the kind of numbers that he is going to be facing, with support that basically consists of people like, well, Patrick the Starfish over here, I think I can safely say, without too much fear of contradiction, that most players in Mr. Crow's situation in this kind of tank would have just called it quits, abandoned this southern end of the map entirely, and gotten out while they could. Mr. Crow, however, apparently is made of sterner stuff. Either that, or he's just crazy. And if you take a quick look at the minimap, you'll see what I mean. Two thirds of his team are up to the north, fighting one third of the enemy team. Which means that two thirds of the enemy team are down here to the south, fighting Mr. Crow and the Progetto 54. And spoiler alert, before too long, they're going to be fighting just Mr. Crow. <laughs> now ask yourself, while you're watching this battle, at what point would you have said, Screw you guys, I'm going home. Because I think if we're being honest, a lot of us would already have gone. <laughs> or already be dead. 
and he could very easily get out of here. All he'd have to do is head straight east. He might take a hit on the way out, but the angles favour him, not the attackers. It would mean kissing goodbye to the Progetto 54. It would mean completely abandoning the southern half of the map. It would mean falling back to a position from which he could hide up in concealment, but still keep eyes on the southern end of the map so that the friendly tanks up to the north, some of those tank destroyers for example, could still attack any enemy tanks attempting to break out from the bridgehead that they would be given over the, well it's not really a river, the dry riverbed here, mostly dry, kind of wet a little, you know what I mean. The only problem with that plan is that it does kind of rely on his teammates up to the north being capable of thinking and breathing at the same time. Unfortunately, as I'm sure we're all painfully aware, you don't have to play team-based online multiplayer games for too long to realise that any kind of plan that relies on the competence of your teammates is usually doomed to failure before it starts. So this might explain why Mr Crow digs in rather than falling back. Or possibly he's just a sucker for punishment. <laughs> Maybe he just enjoys the challenge. I don't know. One thing I do know is that his dogged refusal to give up an inch of ground is making life extremely difficult for the enemy tanks down here. We probably outnumber him and that Progetto by a factor of at least three to one. One thing that I am relatively sure of, even though I obviously can't prove it, is that there is no doubt some extremely choice conversations going on in the enemy team's battle chats due pretty much entirely to the efforts of both Mr. Crow here in the Barask and the Progetto 54 over there, as even the enemy artillery starts trying to dig him out from his little hidey hole tucked in behind this building. But if you thought that the situation that Mr. Crow is in now was grim, and were consoling yourself with the thought that, well, at least it couldn't get much worse, then you clearly haven't been playing World of Tanks enough. He's got seven, at least, teammates up to the north, concentrating on two enemy tanks. Everybody else on the enemy team are now pushing across the river in the middle. And remember, he only has a two-shot autoloader with which to fight them all off, and he's just lost the Progetto 54, so at what point would you bug out? <laughs> I think that most people would agree that right now would be an excellent time to DD Mao, particularly since he just got caught completely by surprise by the ELC even 90 there, and despite getting a high damage roll, failed to kill him. But with enemy tanks now over the river and so close, I honestly think any opportunity to run has passed. With less than 200 health remaining and 16 millimetres of armour, I think you'd have to be both extremely lucky and extremely good in order to get out of this situation alive. And while I feel safe to say that if he could guarantee getting out here alive and falling back to a safer spot and position, at this point he probably would. But at this precise moment, I think trying to do that is far too dangerous. Plus, Events have just transpired up to the north that have probably hardened his resolve to stay put, at least for now, because his surviving teammates have killed off the last enemy tank up to the north. So, here comes the cavalry, yeah? Yeah, you'd think so. <laughs> and you'd be wrong. Seven friendly tanks up to the north in the top three grid lines, five of them heavies. Watch how long it takes these guys to move south of the D-line. I think it's at around this moment where Mr. Crow is coming to the conclusion that his so-called teammates, instead of coming to his assistance, with the lone exception of that Carnarvon over there, are instead digging in on the D-line, waiting for the enemy team to finish him off, and then advance to the north. <laughs> so it's at this point probably a good seven or eight minutes after anybody else would have said it, that Mr. Crow thinks to himself, Screw you guys, I'm going home. But to his great credit, he only thinks it, he doesn't actually do it, even though the T-32 and the C-45 behind him are content to just watch that Carnarvon drive to his death. But with the exception of Mr. Crow himself, and the ISU 1.2K, who's been successfully hiding in the bottom right corner of the map for at least the last half of this battle, 
Mr Crow is finally no longer the only member of his team in the bottom two-thirds of this entire map. I mean, better late than never, but it took them long enough. But Jingles, what about the Carnarvon who rushed south down the middle? Yeah, the Carnarvon doesn't count. He managed to keep almost all of his health intact until the last two minutes of this battle, while at the same time somehow managing to only do 206 damage. But let's not get too carried away about the fact that most of the team are now pushing south. I mean, yes, the fact that they have now found out where their W keys are is cause for celebration, but most of them aren't going to be pushing any further south than the enemy cap circle. <laughs> <laughs> so they're still mostly in the northern end of the map. Then again, given how many times we've seen teams on the verge of victory throwing it all away when consumed by the no-cap kill-all fever, perhaps that's a good thing. Mr Crow doing nearly 4,000 damage and earning a high calibre award in a position where I think most of us, if we're being honest, would have struggled to do the 750 damage that we can expect from the first two shots in our autoloader and then died. And then, just to prove that it wasn't a fluke, although you'll be happy to hear this time, actually getting to use this tank's fantastic speed and agility, he does it again, except better, on the highway. And in this battle, I have to admit, I started off by wondering just what the hell he was thinking. But then again, it's Mr. Crow, and he quite often does things with tanks that most people would consider absolutely suicidal, and then ends up not just making it look good, but also making it look easy. At first I thought, okay, see what he's doing here, he's scouting the ridge line, and actually, no, he isn't. To be fair, scouting the ridge line like that used to be a lot easier. And still is a lot easier if you're in an EBR. But not so much if you're in even something that's pretending to be a light tank like the Barask. Instead, as in the previous battle, he's taken up an extremely aggressive position, well ahead of the rest of the team here in the town. And he's doing this, again, I thought, just to catch a couple of cheeky side shots against enemy tanks as they push into the town. He'll take a couple of shots, and then get out of here. Once again, I'm completely wrong. When Mr. Crow goes somewhere, even in a tank with only, at best, 40 millimeters of armor, like the Barask, he goes there to fight. Now, I do need to apologize in advance here, because thanks to the fact that he's going to spend at least the next couple of minutes tucked right up against the wall, that means that Mr. Crow is going to have to get, well, creative with the camera angles in order to be able to maintain his situational awareness and see what's going on around him, and that might prove difficult to watch for some of you. If that's the case, I apologise, but, well, take my word for it. It's going to be worth it. Wait until you see how much he makes of the extremely limited cover that is going to be available to him. In particular, this dentist shop doorway. Look at that. Now he's not getting shot at here, because the T-69 is dumping his magazine into the side of the AMX-55 instead, and Mr. Crow couldn't do anything about it because he was reloading. The choice of targets, however, proved fatal for the T-69. He takes a hit from the UDES-14-5, which only blows his tracks off, but the UDES is hesitant in capitalising on it, and waits until Mr. Crow has reloaded before coming out to try to finish the job. The enemy tank manages to do 329 damage to him, but Mr. Crow has reloaded and does over 700 damage in return. The somewhat SM with him gets knocked out. Most of the rest of the team are taking a pretty ferocious battering, and Mr. Crow once again finds himself in the unenviable position of being stuck behind a building, with far too many much bigger enemy tanks in close proximity and not an awful lot in the way of backup. Except. Oh, an ammo rack! <laughs> <laughs> uh, much like Rawsash in The Watchmen, this isn't so much a case of Mr. Crow being stuck here with all of these enemy tanks. All of these enemy tanks are stuck here with Mr. Crow. He really wants to finish off that Udes, and the Udes wasn't even looking his way. There's another kill. Sadly, the second shot fails to penetrate, which is a hazard with this tank. It has lowish penetration and atrociously bad gun handling. 
reloading again, but this time instead of ducking into the shelter of the dentist's doorway, he's taking advantage of the Chrysler GF over there, keeping the enemy team occupied while sneaking around in order to take advantage of it. And there's another kill. One shot left, but they have now completely neutralised all enemy resistance in the town. He goes for the reload, ducks into cover just in case, then realises that there is actually nothing left here to fight. The scores are even, 8 kills per team. It's time to start using this tank's speed and maneuverability. The base defenders back up to the north seem to be falling back. They're taking fire, presumably because they're being scouted by the enemy Lance and Sea. The thing is, if you go after that Lance and Sea, it's going to scout you too. And that means the tanks that are shooting, as a result of the Lance and Scouting, will start shooting at you. Now, if you were in an EBR 105 or something similar, that wouldn't matter because they're not only impossible to hit. On the rare occasions when all the stars and planets line up in conjunction, you do actually manage to score a hit, they're impossible to stop because they have wheels that are made out of vibranium and engines that are powered with the tiers of light tank drivers. And don't forget, Mr. Crow isn't actually in a light tank, so he wouldn't have a light tank's bonus to camouflage while moving. The Chrysler GF down there is pushing forward into the enemy base, although he's under some pretty serious pressure from the Charioteer, who is the only enemy tank over there that we actually know about at this point. Even worse, up to the north. The friendly tanks who were defending the ridgeline leading into the friendly base have all either been killed or driven back. So the 122TM and Progetto 46, who were with Mr. Crow in the town, are falling back to the north in order to try to defend the base, which is being capped. Reasoning, probably correctly, that the charioteer and any other tank destroyers hidden on the ridge overlooking the enemy base are more interested in defending than attacking, Mr. Crow goes to the support of his beleaguered teammates who are attempting to eject the enemy team from the friendly cat circle. So far, there's only one actual enemy tank in the cat circle, and he has been spotted, the STG over there, probably spotted by the Carnarvon, who is the only surviving member of the base defence team that's come back because he's thirsty for more. Mr Crow, gunning the engine, or looking for a shot on the STG without revealing himself to return fire because he's probably not low. No, there's a Project 46 over there as well. First shot, on the move, critical damage only. Second shot, making sure the Progetto doesn't have a shot at him. There's the kill. Pulls back into safety, waiting to reload. Projector 46 knows what's good for him. He's getting the hell out of there. Right now, the scores are still even, 11 kills each. Although, with no other enemy tanks spotted thus far on the northern end of the map, with the exception of that Projecto 46, I am extremely disappointed to see that nobody is even attempting to spot him as he retreats across the open ground to the west. I mean, okay, fair enough, there are still two tank destroyers that have not yet been spotted that could be covering the retreat of the Progetto, but I think it's worth the risk to kill something as dangerous as a Progetto 46. All you have to do is peek over the ridge and at least one enemy tank destroyer has now been revealed. The AMX. And remember, the Barask can only reasonably be expected to do 750 damage with two shots, and the AMX has more health than that. Oh, that was cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. He's more than 50 metres away. He's waiting for him to go undetected. Because when the AMX goes undetected, that means Mr. Crow went undetected as well. Oh, there we go. That was nice. We've got one shot. Carnarvon AX moving in. Took the hit. Absolutely worth it. Got the kill. Sniped the rangefinder. Kind of disappointing that a top tier tank destroyer with 257mm of penetration with standard ammunition somehow feels the need to be slinging gold at tanks with 40mm of armour, but hey, it's his money, he can waste it anyway he wants. And reload. And. Come on. Come on. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> right. I wonder if that charioteer is still in the same position. I wouldn't be surprised if he was, it's not exactly unusual to see people sitting in the same spot for minutes on end with absolutely nothing to shoot at rather than, you know, moving to positions where they can find some things to shoot at. And then suddenly finding a whole lot of things to shoot at. Too many things for them to handle because they're the last one left alive on the team. Oh, there's the Brigetta. Ah. 
he's somebody else's gun. And he's dead. That just leaves the charioteer. I would be impressed if the charioteer had actually moved up to support the progetto. But I'd also be very surprised. Oh wow, he did! Look! Battle feed above the minimap. The charioteer killed the friendly progetto who was chasing and spotting the enemy progetto. Well, twill my nipple nuts and send me to Alaska. There he is. He did actually leave his camping spot in order to go and support his teammates. Well done to him. Of course, it's not going to do him any good. <laughs> but hey, at least he tried. No, genuinely, I'm not being sarcastic. Well done to the charioteer. At least he tried. Meanwhile, Mr. Crow's already impressive performance from the first battle when he didn't have teammates who knew what their W key did, showing what he can do when he does have teammates who understand what their W key does. Getting the Ace Tanker, High Calibre, Radley Walters medal, and of course Top Gun. Holy shit, I wasn't actually paying attention. That's nine kills. <laughs> I love watching this guy. And you can watch him too. He streams regularly on Twitch, as well as Croatian. He also speaks at least fluent German and English, and possibly half a dozen other languages too. Seriously, I don't know how these Europeans find the time to learn all the languages that they do. Link to his Twitch channel down below in the video description. I hope you enjoyed today's battles, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.